Good morning, friends. This is Steve from Southern Illinois again. It's been a beautiful week down here this week. Cool, as in cold. I've been running the fireplace, uh, but sunny. Unfortunately, my chronic fatigue has really been acting up this week, so my thoughts are going to be short, so bear with me here. Last week, I introduced you to my shoebox Christmas, and I apologize for the technical difficulties that prevented a lot of you from watching it, watching it live. Uh, but as a part of that shoebox Christmas, over the next few weeks, we're going to be putting things into that shoebox, tools for spiritual support. In this era of COVID, if we're not supporting each other spiritually in times like these, when will we? Last week, we put into that, that shoebox a, an acronym called HOPE, which is a series of four questions that can be used to develop a conversation leading to spiritual support. The first of those questions was, do you have, can you think of any specific sources of hope and strength that are meaningful for you in difficult times? So let's start there. It was one of those <clears throat> experiences that every young man dreads and uh, wishes that he could forget as soon as it happens. It was my first year of college. Uh, my roommate and I were serious college students. Uh, we had, we were both science majors and um, taking some advanced courses for freshmen. So we had really knuckled down. Every night you would find us uh, for several hours uh, studying intensely. Uh, even on Sunday we spent our days studying. So when the school announced a, um, a hayride, a social event, um, my roommate decreed that we were going to take some time and enjoy ourselves. So we set out methodically. <clears throat> Um, we didn't know any girls on campus, uh, so we grabbed the campus, it was called the cast, it was the, uh, the pictures of all of the, the students on campus, and uh, for a couple of hours each evening we would park ourselves in the school cafeteria and just watch the girls go by. And if we saw one that we thought was interesting, we would look her up and in the cast and try to get to know her name. And we had some very simple criteria. Um, she had to smile and she had to interact in a friendly way with the serving staff. Those were our criteria for selecting a possible date for the hayride. At the end of our two weeks, I had narrowed my choice down to three, and he had narrowed his choices down to three. And we started on our perilous quest of inviting a girl to go on the hayride with us. Um, as luck would have it, we both struck gold on the first attempt. And so there we were on the hayride, um, bobbing for apples and doing all of the other fun things that can be done. Um, this was a, a Christian campus, so there weren't any of those things going on. Um, but we really had fun that night, both of us. Uh, in fact, all four of us had fun. So much fun that uh, when we guys asked if we could uh, meet for lunch the next day, the girls said yes. And that started two weeks of absolute wonder in my life. Um, <clears throat> we met almost every day and went for long walks and had meaningful talks and laughed. And uh, the singing team that I was uh, on uh, had to give a program down in Kansas City, which just happened to be her hometown. And so um, 
she surprised me. I didn't know she was doing this, but she went home for the weekend. And, and when I showed up with the singing team and we performed, there she was in the audience smiling at me and pointing me out to her parents. Oh my goodness, this was, this was really nerve-wracking for me. And after the program, mom and dad came up and grilled me on who my parents were and where I was from and where I was going in life. Oh man, it was a, it was a foretaste of things to come. Um, and uh, I, was, I was quite relieved actually when they got done and mother looked at father and then back at me and said, well, that's a relief. And I said, did I pass? She said, you are so unlike any other boy she has ever introduced us to. And she was right there and she was kind of abashedly smiling. And I took that as a good sign. But then two days later, back on campus, we were sitting outside on the the lawn on the front side of campus and she said Steve I hate to do this but this is not going to work and I was rather startled and taken aback she said don't take me wrong you are a nice guy and I really like you but you're still trying to be good and I've given up. So I don't think this is going to go any place. And I remember the thought going through my mind, she's dumping me. But I have never heard a girl dump a guy like this. Talk about a way to slap a guy up one, one side of the face and then prop him up with the other. You know, it just... I. So I smiled and she smiled and she got up and she walked away and that was the end of it. I went back to my room and buckled down and started studying again. It was a year before Vivian walked into my life and I was so glad that I had gotten dumped. Morality. It's kind of a trigger word in our culture. Some people are all for it and some people are all against it. Some of us are uncomfortable with it and I understand why. We've been exposed to people who uh, judged everybody by their standard of morality and wanted to force it on other people. And Some of us get tired of not measuring up to our own standards of morality like my ex-girlfriend. Last week I suggested that spirituality, broadly defined, uh, consists of the ways that we experience, express, and seek meaning and purpose in our lives. But that quest, that seeking for meaning and purpose, necessarily leads us to adopting values and ideals which get translated into behavior, morals. One of the powerful strengths for resilience in times of trouble is connecting our behavior to the values and ideals that we hold. When we do that, when our behavior is consistent with our ideals and our values, it strengthens our sense of meaning and purpose. And for me, that's a source of hope and strength when I'm dealing with difficult times. That's what morality means to me. Last week I challenged you to live spiritually, to think spiritually. This week I want to challenge you to connect that spiritual thinking and values to behavior.
live moral lives. Don't just coast through life doing what comes naturally, what comes easily. When you do it, when you live intentionally, you will find a strength, or at least I do. I find a strength and a me sense of meaning and purpose that's missing when I'm just playing video games or Candy Crush. Now, for those of you who are religious, the text talk this week is going to examine how Jesus dealt with immoral people. Because I think much of the problem that we face in this world with the acceptance of morality is the way we as Christians treat people that we consider immoral. Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, look up and have a good week.